January 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Genesis chapters 32 and 33 from the Old Testament. So Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he exclaimed, This is the camp of God. So he named that place Maenaim. Jacob sent messengers on ahead to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the region of Edom. He commanded them, This is what you must say to my lord Esau. This is what your servant Jacob says, I have been staying with Laban until now. I have oxen, donkeys, sheep, and male and female servants. I have sent this message to inform my lord, so that I might find favor in your sight. The messengers returned to Jacob and said, We went to see your brother Esau. He is coming to meet you and has 400 men with him. Jacob was very afraid and upset. So he divided the people who were with him into two camps, as well as the flocks, herds, and camels. If Esau attacks one camp, he thought, then the other camp will be able to escape. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, O Lord, you said to me, Return to your land and to your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I am not worthy of all the faithful love you have shown your servant. With only my walking stick I crossed the Jordan, but now I have become two camps. Rescue me, I pray, from the hands of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me, as well as the mothers with their children. But you said, I will certainly make you prosper and will make your descendants like the sand on the seashore, too numerous to count. Jacob stayed there that night. Then he sent as a gift to his brother Esau 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 female camels with their young, 40 cows and 10 bulls, and 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. He entrusted them to his servants, who divided them into herds. He told his servants, Pass over before me, and keep some distance between one herd and the next. He instructed the servant leading the first herd, When my brother Esau meets you and asks, To whom do you belong? Where are you going? Whose herds are you driving? Then you must say, They belong to your servant Jacob. They have been sent as a gift to my lord Esau. In fact, Jacob himself is behind us. He also gave these instructions to the second and third servants, as well as all those who were following the herd, saying, You must say the same thing to Esau when you meet him. You must also say, In fact, your servant Jacob is behind us. Jacob thought, I will first appease him by sending a gift ahead of me. After that I will meet him. Perhaps he will accept me. So the gifts were sent on ahead of him while he spent that night in the camp. During the night, Jacob quickly took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream along with all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. Then a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not defeat Jacob, he struck the socket of his hip, so the socket of Jacob's hip was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Then the man said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. I will not let you go, Jacob replied, unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? He answered, Jacob. No longer will your name be Jacob, the man told him, but Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, Please tell me your name. Why do you ask my name? The man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. So Jacob named the place Peniel, explaining, Certainly I have seen God face to face and have survived. The sun rose over him as he crossed over Peniel, but he was limping because of his hip. That is why to this day the Israelites do not eat the sinew which is attached to the socket of the hip, because he struck the socket of Jacob's hip near the attached sinew. Jacob looked up and saw that Esau was coming along with 400 men, so he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants. 
He put the servants and their children in front, with Leah and her children behind them, and Rachel and Joseph behind them. But Jacob himself went on ahead of them, and he bowed toward the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, embraced him, hugged his neck, and kissed him. Then they both wept. When Esau looked up and saw the women and the children, he asked, Who are these people with you? Jacob replied, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. The female servants came forward with their children and bowed down. Then Leah came forward with her children, and they bowed down. Finally, Joseph and Rachel came forward and bowed down. Esau then asked, What did you intend by sending all these herds to meet me? Jacob replied, To find favor in your sight, my lord. But Esau said, I have plenty, my brother. Keep what belongs to you. No, please take them, Jacob said, if I have found favor in your sight, accept my gifts from my hand. Now that I have seen your face, and you have accepted me, it is as if I have seen the face of God. Please take my present that was brought to you, for God has been generous to me, and I have all I need. When Jacob urged him, he took it. Then Esau said, Let's be on our way, I will go in front of you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are young, and that I have to look after the sheep and cattle that are nursing their young. If they are driven too hard for even a single day, all the animals will die. Let my Lord go on ahead of his servant. I will travel more slowly at the pace of the herds and the children until I can come to my Lord at Seir. So Esau said, let me leave some of my men with you. Why do that? Jacob replied. My Lord has already been kind enough to me. So that same day Esau made his way back to Seir. But Jacob traveled to Succoth where he built himself a house and made shelters for his livestock. That is why the place was called Succoth. After he left Paden Aram, Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem in the land of Canaan, and he camped near the city. Then he purchased a portion of the field where he had pitched his tent. He bought it from the sons of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of money. There he set up an altar and called it, The God of Israel is God. God, isn't that, isn't that just like us to be more fearful of people than we are of you? Um, although if I had done to my brother or sister what Jacob had done to Esau and saw my brother or sister coming with 400 men, um, my humanist probably, probably would have reacted the same way. Um, you know, the whole Bible is, a, is about learning to have trust and faith and humble ourselves before you. And I think that's a perfect example. Uh, but my favorite part of that reading, and you can hear it when I read it because I just grin from ear to ear, is the very end where it says about Jacob that he set up an altar and called it the God of Israel is God. So we started this journey with Jacob with a single rock. And we, we watched him at the place where he called Bethel saying, I'm not too sure about you, God. I think you might exist. My father says you do. My grandfather says you do. My whole family says you do, but I, I am not so sure. But if you protect me on this journey, I'm taking and give me food to eat and clothing to wear. And I return safely back to my father's house then the Lord will become my God. And I get so excited about this God because it is the perfect example of our journey as we start off as, as new Christians. Uh, we may have believed you or we may have been, believed in you or we may have been raised in a family that believed in you. And then we start off with this one tiny stone that says, I think I believe in you. I think I have faith on my own. And we all have made those deals with you of, I'm going to turn over my stone, but so many people in my life have hurt me and have left me and have told me I'm of no value. So I'm not really sure how you're going to be any different, God. But here's my one stone. And it was so exciting watching Jacob hand over that one stone. And then here we are at the end of this chapter. 
And it's not one stone anymore. It's an entire altar built to God. And we watched him struggle the whole way through. And probably <laughs> will continue for the rest of his life. But we watch him grow into a, into a relationship with God. We watch him learn humility. We watch him learn patience. We watch him learn gratitude. He is so incredibly thankful that he has two camps to divide all that God has given him. So God didn't just give him food and clothing to wear. He blessed him over and over and over again. And here's Jacob at the end of the story, not only realizing this, but acting on it, acting on his faith and saying, here is my altar. You are my God. You are the God of Israel. And it doesn't mean he didn't struggle. Even right before he built the altar, a struggle with uh, fear over his brother and what his brother would do to him instead of what God could do to him. You know, even that kind of odd thing uh, that is in the middle of the night and people argue over what it is all the time but this wrestling with a man passage that comes in the middle of that God um, whether it's you or whether it was real or whether it was a vision a dream it doesn't really matter exactly what it was but we all understand that wrestling part and it usually happens in the middle of the night we have all wrestled with our faith we've all wrestled with doubts we've all wrestled with fear and in the end, in the morning, Jacob doesn't denounce his faith, doesn't walk away from God. In fact, he is more adamant than ever to stay in that wrestling hold with God until God will bless him. We are watching Jacob claim his faith. God has already chosen him. God has already chosen Jacob, and we're watching Jacob accept that incredible gift. So God, thank you for this amazing story and letting us watch Jacob walk through from the, from the first inklings, that first stone of faith. Very shaky, very transparent, very, I'm not really sure what this looks like, and I'm even going to test you. And then all of these situations, and then we get to see him where he says, you are the God of Israel. You are my God. You have given me so much, so much I don't even deserve it. You have more than protected me. You are my God. So God, as we walk through our life today, I just ask that we remember what it felt like to have that first little tiny stone and how far we've come from that and, and how far we still need to go. But to value our relationship with you. Something that is a relationship. It takes time. We need to work on it constantly. We need to constantly communicate with you. Constantly be in your word. I don't know how else you develop a relationship. But today, can you help us be very intentional about remembering that that relationship of helping us remember those first stones so that we're patient with other people who come to us with those first stones of doubt and faith all mixed together. And that we're patient with people as they wrestle with God. And that we understand that people who wrestle with God, even ourselves, can come out in the morning and claim victory over that and know that you are our God. Mm, I just so love your word, God. <laughs> I so love you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.